Hi everyone, it's Austin Chu from Risk Check and today we are at Moser. We are in Schaffhausen, which is kind of on the border between Switzerland and Germany. Can't wait to see what they have in store for us today. Let's go! Edouard. Hey Austin. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Always well. Long time. Long time. Long time. Good to see you. Good to see you. Nice it's office. Been a long time. Yeah. Too, yeah, it's a bit temporary here. Yeah. Oh, a bit temporary? I mean, love we, 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 we need space, so uh, we merge like the studio with my office. And, uh, nice, yeah. nice. Good to see all the prizes. <laughs> you guys have won. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Some good. space for more, hopefully. Yeah, exactly, but, yeah, exactly. Cool. So here we are the, the manufacturer of Moser. Mm -hmm. We actually have three entities here. We have uh -huh. Moser, the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Haute Lance, which is our sister brand. Mm -hmm. And we have Precision Engineering. Mm -hmm. Precision Engineering is the hairspring production, development, so Let's go. You can see all of that yeah. if you want. So we start with uh, what I like to say is like the, the, the really the starting point of developing, designing a watch, and that's where the engineers work on our movement. We we, we love to say that really Moser is known for yeah, beautiful design, but the core of what we do is the movement. Uh, yes. We develop and design the, the movements here. We have I mean, we acquired Moser in 2012. It came back to life in 2005. Mm -hmm. And I think in the last, what is it now, 18 years? Yeah. There's been at least one new movement every year. That's insane. We early in the year. This hasn't insane. been yet, yeah. but there's going to be at least one new movement and potentially more uh, uh, new new uh, modules as well. Oh, we're nice. working on. So we have four people work, working here. Mm -hmm. um, Arno is in charge of this department. Salut Arnaud. Hello. Hello. Uh, and uh, yeah, I asked him to, to show something cool. <laughs> I love this. I love <laughs> this. I know people, a lot of people have been uh, looking at it since we launched it exactly one year ago yeah. at uh, Watches and Wonders and at the Cylindrico Tourbillon. And, so. and it's your first fully skeletonized. Exactly. Right. And in house, it was a lot of work with, uh, with uh, Arnaud because the question we had was if we make a skeleton, how does it look? Yes. You know, it yeah. has to be. I mean, there's a lot of, of skeletons and uh, the key for me was um, what kind of finishing to make it traditional but modern. Mm -hmm. So there's the anglage, there's the, the, the brosse, uh, the satinage, the brush uh, finishing, uh, the dark grey. I mean, we didn't want to use a light grey, but yeah. rather dark. So uh, it's a bit of modern and, and, um, and traditional at the same time. Symmetry, yes. I mean, I always say it, yes. I, love, <laughs> I love symmetry. So there was a lot of discussion with, uh, with Arno, is like, how do we create like bridges that are kind of symmetrical? Yeah. And then... Uh, Which is very rare, actually, in skeletonized watches in general. Yeah, I mean, there, there's different styles. Again, uh, you can not say one is better than the other. It's just like, we just like the one we, we did. And, uh, and it's the base for... A few things that we cannot show you yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arno is working on, <laughs> uh, but we have the same kind of discussion. Sometimes it's more like, oh, why, you know, how do we finish this bridge and how can we make it? Yeah. Yesterday we had a discussion on a similar project where we were about symmetry, mm -hmm. exactly, and uh, and it's fun. So yeah, no, we're very proud. Uh, what's special about also this movement is the cylindrical tourbillon. Yeah. I think we will sh we will bring yes. you afterwards yes. um, at the production of uh, of the hairspring and, and escapement. What about this stuff? Like it's well, that's you know sometimes you have a critical type. element. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I take here that's the uh, the automatic s system for for Moser, and yeah, so you design it on the computer. It mm -hmm. works on the computer, but we need work in the reality. And here it's a system where if you um, if your rotor turns in one direction or the other, or another, you want the the barrel to charge always in the same direction. Oh right? wow, yeah. So that's the peloton system. So let's go in and start in this workshop. So here, it's a bit noisy, but I hope you can you can hear me. Here we start with uh, what do we have the right one here. Yeah. So we write we start with uh, with this magic material. Uh, it comes in a wire of 0.6 millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a little bit of a smaller version. It's a round wire, and then what we do is we have it. Um, we we start pulling it. So this machine, so here we have, uh, we see the, the wire comes in here and goes through this and we have small um, bearings there and with, with, with diamonds inside and we yeah. pull it uh, about eight times in here and it can take two weeks oh, to bring wow. it to the right dimension. And slowly, you need to do it slowly because otherwise you break it no. or it, it, it creates too much tension inside. No. You pull it until you, you get to the right uh, diameter. Yeah. But when the wire comes out of this machine, it's still round. And as you can see here on the picture, it has to be flat. Yeah. So how do we do it? First, 
we, we go into the washing machine. So when it comes out of that, it, it can be dust or small imperfections. And we, we bring it into the, the machines you can see here. It's a washing machine. It's not the washing machine you find in your kitchen, of course. It's a very <laughs> complex, different method, different uh, liquids, uh, different temperature until we get it completely uh, clean. So once the wire is clean, that's where I would say the most critical part happens is we go into this room. We, can, we cannot enter because it's controlled in terms of humidity and temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, a fraction of a degree of difference here will make the, the wire completely different oh, and wow. then we cannot use it anymore. So yeah. That's why we stay outside. But basically what we do here is we have the wire go through those two cylinders mm -hmm. and it's pressed to make it flat. To make it flat, yeah. And that's where the precision in, in, in height is 0.05 plus minus 0.05 micron. So a tenth of a micron of, uh, of, of precision. It is, uh, it is insane. And what comes out is then a wire that is a, a flat wire like this. So you can, you can see maybe with, with the light, I don't know if you can see how it, it uh, reflects the light. So here on the edge, you don't see it, but it's, it's a, yeah, basically it's a flat wire. And that's kind of our raw material. That's when we can start manually to play with, with this to make it the heart of your watch. Amazing. Grüezi miteinander. So here we have our colleagues who take the wires, the flat wires that we saw before, mm -hmm. and they basically turn them into their hairsprings. We take those small wires that we cut to the right dimension, and then we try to put it inside the small ring here. And you can see here, there's a small... Yeah, the little inserts. Exactly. And you, you need to put the four of them, and then, then you coil them within each other. And the distance between the different uh, wires make it the, 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 the distance between the different spheres. And yeah. what's interesting is you can have, depending on what kind of, es of escapement, of movement, or frequency you need, they have different type of, uh, of rings. And, and sometimes you have three and up to eight. Eight, wow. eight different spirit in, that gives the distance. Yeah. yeah, I remember trying this last year when I visited, and it was. You want to train again? No, <laughs> no, I don't want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> and they, they, they're very fast. I think they can do about 200 of those rings per day. Wow. Yeah. So that's eight, in average, about 800 uh, yeah. hairsprings. I don't think I can do one in a lifetime. <laughs> Once they, they they have put it in there, it comes out like this. So it's yeah. it's a ring. Yeah. Probably it's in steel, right, Stefan? Steel, and then the, the wires are inside, but they steal the wires now. If you pick them out, they they go back pretty much to the same shape. Yeah. yeah. So we need to what we call fix mm. the the shape of the the hairspring so that it looks like this uh, snail type of thing. Can I use that? Oh wow! Well. Cool. So here what happens is, um, here we are in the, uh, the furnace where the oven is. So we, we, have, we have seen those rings before. Mm -hmm. uh, we put them on the tray like this. You can see like yeah. quite a few of them. And then we put them inside this uh, tube, mm -hmm. the distance around, around there. Here we have a few sensors that measure the temperature. The print temperature has to be very, uh, very precise. Um, then we create a vacuum so it doesn't oxidize because we bring it to around 620 degrees mm -hmm. in temperature. And then there's a timing. You can see it on the curve there. We need to bring it to a certain, slowly to a certain temperature and then cool it down. Yeah. And then you can remove the ring. You remove the ring and then it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And then you have the feeling, oh, I have, I have two hairsprings, right? Yes. But we actually have way more. Yes. And what they do, and it sounds very, uh, it's that's manual work, but we have somebody who just hits it like this. Wow. And you can see we had, uh, I think we had two in the beginning. Yep. By now we have, I don't know, six, seven, eight. Theory, we should have eight. <laughs> so cool. Your turn. <laughs> I think you can, you can do this. So you really need to hit it. Oh yeah. This is fun. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> That's the one that I achieved as well. It's a, so it's cool. a hairspring production 101. And it's so so delicate. It's so delicate, yeah. So here that's where we once we have produced I'm gonna close the door, it's gonna be a bit. Uh, once we have produced the, the hairsprings that we, we've seen before, um, they they all come to this to this uh, atelier. 
where we start multi multiple, multiple tasks. And depending on the days, there, there's different things. So we can go from one person to the other and, and look at, at what they, they, they're doing. And maybe we're gonna start here. Um, but basically here, what we do is create the curve that we've, we've seen before, mm -hmm. and maybe... The Breguet curve? Oh, uh, now we're making a, oh, that's even, that's something also very uh, nice to watch, but she, the lady now is uh, assembling the cylindrical uh, tourbillon. Amazing. Uh, so they're putting the bridge or the cage on the, on the, the escapement. Darf man kurz anschauen, wann du fertig bist? Yeah. Now she's under pressure. <laughs> Um, but other things that we do is we will see afterwards, like putting the, the gold screws on the, the escapement, creating the curve, um, putting the, the, the pallets on the fork, mm -hmm. uh, on the anchor. Yeah. Um, also measuring the, the hairsprings because we, we classify them. Yeah. We explain that afterwards, classifying the balance wheels and, and, and matching them. So here we do, um, Eddie is doing a, a, what we call the flat curve. So there's two types of curves. You have the flat two-dimensional curves and you have the three-dimensional curves, which are the mm -hmm. Breguet curve. So here it's, uh, it's the flat curve, so it's two-dimensional. It's, it's done by, by hand. It's basically taking the, the hairspring, can you so uh, the hairspring that we've seen before. We have fixed what we call the, the virole in mm -hmm. the center. That's the, the, the way we fix it in the, in the center. But then we, what she's doing right now manually is to create this curve. You can see that we have the plants here and it has to fit yeah. within the tolerance, but it's being done all, all by hand with the tweezers, Crazy. slowly, slowly turning. Crazy. And this is two-dimensional, but on another order for, for another uh, movement, she might need to do it three-dimensional. So yeah. Not only you need to create that curve, but on top of on that, top. it has to go over the, the hairspring. So here it's going to be a little bit louder. Uh, we are in a more traditional um, uh, machines. Yeah. You can see them here, the, the, some of the the cairn, we have uh, some new machines coming here. We have the electroerosion, so we oh, cut nice. the, the parts. Yeah. Here we have uh, where we do the everything that is uh, in, in rotation, the décolletage uh, type of uh, machines. We have the hand finishing. Um, what do you would see, I would say, cl more classic uh, in, in uh, uh, traditionally with, uh, within a manufacturer? Yeah. Typically, you know, here we take um, A part like uh, uh, the main plate of our perpetual calendar is something you know. We start with something like this. Yeah. Very precise holes that go on the on the machine there. Then we have those tiny uh, tools. Yeah. We actually for for a perpetual calendar that the end looks like this. We need 87 tools. Wow. So we have at the back of the machine like a, a, a magazine or a storage where the the robot comes, picks the uh, right yeah, tool yeah. all the time, then controls, and then it takes about two and a half hours for to create one of those parts, just with the machine. Wow. And then the manual work starts Start. for the finishing and all those elements. Yeah. But starting with this to get to that. Here, so we are at the watchmaker's level. We have, uh, here is more like, uh, as I said, hand anglage, um, prototyping. Um, we're gonna go and see the, the watchmakers assembling. So what do we do here is assemble typically Chrono, tourbillon, um, perpetual calendar. What are we working on? The perpetual calendar, yes. So one of the most iconic products from, uh, from Moser. Yeah. Perpetual calendar, you, you know. Of um, course, my is, favorite uh, complication. You see it here. Quite a complex uh, movement. What's specific here is you see the two discs, mm -hmm. one on top of each other, that gives the, 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 the date. Mm -hmm. It's one of the only, not the only perpetual calendar that jumps at midnight. Yeah. Goes forward, backwards. It's testing now the uh, the date uh, system. Mm -hmm. This is a perpetual calendar movement, and you see the indication of the VP at the back. So we yeah. keep it at the back because you, you just needed to set it up. Mm -hmm. Once you have set uh, the leap year with the small star here at the back, you don't need every day to check. Oh, yeah. Is it a leap year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe on the 28th of February. Exactly. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it. And then we have the escapement, the Moser escapement, and we will go now to our uh, colleagues at the escapement department. Um, this is a modular escapement. This is something very special at Moser. And here we, um, we are in the place, where, as I said, where we work on, uh, on regulating uh, the, the movements. 
we usually have you know watches uh, being prepared um, and the escapement being tested regulated here you have the witchy yeah. where you basically simulate the, the what we call the six position yeah. of, of the watch could be like this could be like this could be like this we have the like <laughs> exactly and then you put them on there you get the, the graph you get the amplitude the frequency uh, the precision in all those those direction the strict um, definition of, of what a, a Mosa watch what tolerances uh, we, we, sh we should have. Mm -hmm. He's regulating now mm -hmm. uh, the movement. This is a... Which of is this? So it's the automatic. Mm -hmm. He hasn't put yet the, uh, the automatic module. Yeah. But he has put the, the, uh, the, the escapement and wor start working on, on uh, putting the, uh, the precision. This should take a few minutes. If we've done a good job with the hairspray, yeah. the balance wing yeah. and the rest of the movement, yeah. th that's where you save a lot of time. Yes. Because if yes. you need three days, to make sure the watch has precision, yeah. then, uh, then the watch cost uh, fortune. So uh, it's important that everything works well. Can we go and see some watches? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I hope you guys enjoyed the manufacturer visit just as much as I did. And you know, stay tuned for our next video.